Hi there, I'm Michael O'Neill, and this is six podcasting mistakes that could kill your show. I love podcasting, and part of me loving podcasting is helping people launch high-end, world-class podcasts. Unfortunately, what I see too often is people kind of fly by nighting the podcast, and they don't make it past that crazy seven-episode arc, meaning most people's podcasts end at an average of the seventh episode. In this video, I'm going to explain why most podcasts fail. Chances are it's one of these six things. Now, long before I was a podcaster, I was a designer and a branding guy. I've taken tons of that branding experience into my podcast launch clients. I will tell you that right now, at least 80% of why a podcast is successful, if you don't already have an audience, is your brand. And I don't just mean your logo, which is actually a big part of it, your artwork, but I mean the actual brand that your podcast represents. If you don't know who your audience is and what you're talking to them about, chances are they're not going to find you. Oftentimes, your podcast brand isn't necessarily your personal product brand. Meaning, if you've already had a brand, you've written a couple of books, you've done a couple things in social media, that may be great in that platform, doesn't always translate to podcasting. So part of what you have to do in your podcast is make sure that the people that are seeking the thing that you're talking about can find you. And that may mean using a brand that's not the same one you've been using for years. So let's say you're a personal trainer and you have Bob Jones Personal Training. Now, if you make a podcast called Bob Jones Personal Training, no one's going to find it because they don't know what the heck Bob Jones Personal Training is about. But if you normally train 40-somethings in CrossFit, you might have a podcast called CrossFit Over 40, which means if I'm some 40-something-year-old dude, which I am, and I'm interested in CrossFit, I'm going to go find your show. So sometimes people that have a good personal brand, it doesn't always translate to the podcasting world. So number one, nail your brand. Number two, bad audio quality. There's a misnomer in the podcast world, which is, hey man, you got some good content, just throw it out there and it's going to be heard and it's going to be listened to and people aren't going to worry about it. That's not true at all. When you think about how people consume podcasts, they're going to be in their car, they're going to be listening to you on earbuds. Typically, they're in environments where they can hear you pretty well. So if you have bad audio quality, chances are they're coming on from NPR or morning radio or Howard Stern or something over to your janky sounding podcast and going, oh, this is what podcasting is? No thanks. So unless you're Tim Ferriss and you get a bit of a hall pass because you walk in with many, many millions of listeners... You don't get a chance to bring those people back a second time. The good news is, in 2018, there's no reason not to have good audio quality right out of the gates. You can buy a microphone for $69 on Amazon that gives you a fantastic sound, and you can plug it in with XLR or USB. This microphone is the Audio-Technica ATR 2100. I will link it up here in the description so you can check it out yourself. One thing I might avoid if I were you are any of the Blue Yeti microphones. Now, if you have one, that's fine. But the problem with those mics are they are condenser microphones, which require a very, very quiet room. I happen to have a very quiet room. I've got three layers of soundproofing. You can't see this, but I got a drum set right over here. And I do that because I, I not only want to block the sound of my drums going out into the world, but I want to block the world sound from coming into my studio. So if you don't have that and you have kids and dogs and garbage trucks and things like that, a condenser microphone is really hard to live with because it can hear a mouse fart in the next county. You want a dynamic microphone. This that I'm speaking into right now, which is the Heil PR40, is a dynamic microphone, which means if I move my face away from this mic and like over here, you can't hear the microphone as well as you can when I'm right on it. So you want a dynamic microphone that works uh, when it's kind of a loud environment. And this is a great one to choose. That ATR2100 I just suggested is a great dynamic microphone. Bang for the buck. So 
you have a choice. If you already have the Blue Yeti, you can use it as a doorstop, which is what I recommend, or you can get a quiet room. Try to get yourself, like you can literally go into your closet and that's a good place to record from. Uh, it's got all the clothes to dampen the sound. If you've not tried that yet, it actually works great. I know a lot of people that are professional voiceover artists that literally record voiceover from their closet. The third thing that can kill your show is not researching your guests. And this sort of dovetails into my number four, but if you know a little bit about the person you're interviewing, chances are you're going to have a much more flowing show conversation. And that's because you can ask them insightful questions versus all the stuff you'd find out on their about page. So even if you just take 10 or 15 minutes to research who they are and what they've done, write down into like, what are some of their hobbies? Can you talk about the World Series or their favorite sports team or the fact that they do stand up paddleboarding or they, they coach their kids volleyball? If you research those things, it makes the conversation flow so much better. So research your guests at least a little bit. If they have a great experience on your show, they're going to recommend you to their other big fish friends and you're going to have way better content for your podcast than your competitors will. Number four, and this is a, this, we start getting into a bit of my pet peeves because when you talk about what we do as podcasters, you are a host. You are a podcast host. By definition, if you invited somebody into your house for a party, you would never just say, hey, this is Bob, and then just let them roam freely. You would introduce Bob around so people at your party could get to know Bob and they had some context on how they knew Bob. That's how you want to introduce your guest. What I love to do is I call it the eight mile technique, which is if you've ever seen Eminem eight mile, the last scene of the movie is the big rap battle between him and and the bad guy. And he has to go second, or I'm sorry, he has to go first. Which means that whoever the guy that goes second can use all of that ammo against him. And this is a freestyle rap battle. So the idea is I'm going to cut up the guy I'm uh, battling against. And whoever can flow better, whoever has better, you know, ball busts is going to win the rap battle. But what Eminem did in his is he busted himself the entire time. So he took a minute and a half and just... He said, yeah, I am white trash. I did grow up poor, you know, blah, blah, blah. So by the time the other guy got to go, he had no ammo. Eminem had used all of his ammo. So what I like to do when I have a good big fish guest is I'll look at their about page and I will introduce them using all of the stuff that they're really well known for. So I'll say, yeah, this person did this, this, and this. And I'm literally reading from their about page because I never want to talk about anything that's already on their about page on my show. So by the time I get done with their intro, I've already used all their ammo, which means they have to be original and interesting on my show. That is my Eminem eight mile technique. So you want to introduce them with a really great edification. And if I can pull it off, I'm going to throw uh, a video right here. First, he created and starred in one of the greatest sketch comedy shows of all time. He has two new stand-up specials premiering on Netflix this spring. Please welcome Dave Chappelle. What I love about that video of Jimmy Fallon is that he does everything a great professional host does, and he did it in like 10 seconds. He edified his guest, in this case, Dave Chappelle. He plugged his guest by saying, hey, his Netflix specials are coming up here, here, here. And the most important words of any intro happen at the very end of the intro. And that is your guest's name. Never utter your guest's name before the last two words. That is a sign of someone who's really studied the art of hosting by saying something like, My next guest did blank, 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 blank. Their next blank is coming up November 15th at 5 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, bang, bang. First name, last name. So you never say, my next guest is Michael O'Neill. Michael, because all of a sudden now it reads like you're reading a bio from Wikipedia and there's nothing more boring for somebody to listen to. That's part A. Part B, never. Ever, 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 ever 
do the thing, which is to say, hey, you know what? I've told the audience a little bit about you. Why don't you fill in the rest of the blanks? Because what you're doing right now is you're handing the reins to your show over to someone who doesn't know anything about your audience. They don't know how your audience learns, how they listen, how they consume your content. Plus, it also means that you haven't done your job as a host. You haven't done any research on your guest. You should be able to answer that question yourself. How does the experience of your guest relate to your audience? That is, by definition, your job as a host to introduce that guest in a great way. So, number four is bad intro technique. Don't do it. Number five, not ejecting from your questions. This one is a bit of a rookie mistake, meaning... Just because you've written a few questions down or you have the tornado round or the lightning round or the hurricane round doesn't mean you actually have to ask those questions. If you're actually active listening to your guest and you say, hey, blah, 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 and they give you this great answer, be ready with a follow-up. Follow up that question with something that you thought of while they were responding. If you just go, awesome, and then move on to the next question, not only is it insanely boring for your audience, but it's borderline insulting for your guest. It tells me, and I've been interviewed a bunch of times, that you didn't listen to anything I just said. I just told you a really dear personal story about my parents or my dog or something, and you just went, awesome. So when you, blah, blah, and I'm like, wow, I can't believe they did not even pay any attention or follow up at all to that thing I just said. So follow up your questions. And if you have a nice flow going of the conversation, don't be afraid to just leave a few questions on the table. You'll get to interview them again. If you've done your job well with your podcast, you will get to interview that person one more time. Finally, number six, and this is also my biggest pet peeve in what I would consider modern podcasting. If I'm ever asked to speak about podcasting at conferences, I always do a little informal poll of the audience. And I always say, Hey, um, how many in this crowd make it to the very end of a podcast? And I will tell you unequivocally that it's about 15% of the people in that room make it to the very end of a show, like to the closing credits. But I'll ask you right now, dear podcaster, when do 99% of podcasters promote their guests? I'll wait. Now, I know many of you right now out loud just said, Oh, at the end. What that means is 85% of the people that listen to your show, if you do this, don't ever get to hear where they can find the person that you're interviewing, which means that person just totally donated their time and expertise to your show without getting anything in return. Now, no one says this has to be a quid pro quo and that people that are interviewed on podcasts have to get something out of it. Uh, However, it is your job as a host to make sure that they get something out of your show. We go back to that Jimmy Fallon intro. He plugged Dave Chappelle right at the very beginning of that intro. He said, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest had one of the most successful shows, blah, 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 blah. His Netflix special is coming out, blah, blah, blah. There's the plug. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Chappelle. And that's the intro. So he got the plug out of the way really, really early. If you listen to anybody that's a pro, Adam Carolla, Joe Rogan, Howard Stern, anybody that does shows on a regular basis and came from a traditional radio background, they plug their guests right away. So my suggestion to you is plug your guest at the beginning, middle, and end of the show. Introduce them. My, my, you know, today's guest did blank, 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 blank. They have a brand new book coming out November 15th. It's available on Amazon. You can go to blah, blah, blah blah.com com to get the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael O'Neill. Now you've got your guests feeling really good because you've just gotten that plug out of the way. Then during the course of the show, you continue to plug them. Don't ever, this is part B of my biggest pet peeve, don't ever, 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 A, wait until the end of the show, and B, say, hey, Why don't you tell people where they can find you? You know why? Because it's your job. It's your job specifically as a host to tell your audience where they can find your guest, which is why before you hit record on your podcast, you find out all that information. Hey, what are you plugging right now? 
What are you promoting? Do you have a new book coming out? What's the URL? Do you have a special hashtag? Do you have a special, you know, download code? Is there something that I can talk about during the course of the show? Because you're going to be talking about this great content. You want to be able to tell your audience how to get that content during the course of the show. Those are the six things that can kill your podcast. Let's recap. Number one, you haven't nailed your brand yet. Number two, you got bad audio quality. Number three, you didn't research your guest enough. Number four, bad intro technique. Number five, not ejecting from your questions. And number six, improper plugging. If you want to find out about how to become a kick-ass podcast interviewer, I have a course based on that very subject. It's called The Art of the Interview, and it's available at artoftheinterview.co. If you go to artoftheinterview.co and use promo code YouTube, I'll give you 100 bucks off your course. I also have a show called The Solopreneur Hour, which is on iTunes, solohour.com slash iTunes, or you can check it out in the description. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.